Hi, I'm Petra Wolf from the University of Trier. And I'm Emmanuel Argi from the University of Bergen. And we give a talk on the complexity of intersectional emptiness for star-free language classes. This is a joint work together with Henning Fernau and Stefan Hoffmann from the University of Trier, Markus Holzer from the University of Gießen, Ismail Jecker now from the University of Warsaw, and Matthias de Oliveira Oliveira also from the University of Bergen. In this work, we are interested in the intersectional emptiness problem. Given a list of finite automata, A1 to AM, we want to know if there is a word accepted by all automata, which means that the intersection of the language accepted by all automata is not empty. In the general case, the problem is P-space complete, and even restricted to unit alphabets, the problem is anti-complete. So it's a generally hard problem, that's why we look at the complexity of this problem for a restricted class of language. And in this case, we look at star-free language. Star-free language can be defined in two ways, first by star-free expression. So a star-free expression is a regular expression in which we are not allowed to use clean star, but we can use complementation. The second characterization is about monoid. So we say that a monoid is aperiodic if for every element the sequence uh, the element, element x, the sequence x to the i, uh, stabilized to one element. In other words, uh, there exists an n such that x to the n plus 1 is equal to x to the n. Now, a star free language is the class of language that can be either uh, defined by a star free expression or such that the syntactic monoid is aperiodic. And we look at two infinite hierarchy inside the star free language namely the Strobin-Tarian hierarchy and the cousin bozowski top depth hierarchy. Uh, both hierarchy cover the uh, star-free language. So some examples of star-free language and non-star-free language. So sigma star is star-free language because it can be written as the complement of the empty language. Then the language where words start and end with B, uh, A or start and end with B is also star-free. Some example of non sub free language can, is like A, A star, so the uh, even word uh, containing only A. And even if we have a B star in between the two A, is A star free. And this can be seen using the monoid characterization. So in, to define the two year key, we need to define two closure operations. First, the Boolean closure, so the Boolean closure of a class of language M is a set of language obtained by finite union, intersection, and complementation of language in M. For the second operation, we need to first define what a marked product is. So given a language L0, L1 to LK, the marked product of this language is the language L0, A1, L1, A2, etc., AK, LK. So the concatenation of each uh, LI was in between a letter, a specific letter. So the, the second operation is the polynomial closure. Given a class of language M, the polynomial closure of M is a set of language that is defined as finite union of mark product of language in M. So now we can define the concatenation hierarchy, which is a general way to build a hierarchy. So given a base class M, the, concaten the concatenation hierarchy starts with M and then have half level and full level. So the level n plus, n plus 1 half is a polynomial closure of the level n, and the level n plus 1 is a Boolean closure of the level n plus 1 half. So the adopted hierarchy is a concatenation hierarchy with the base uh, class uh, containing finite and cofinite language. For the strobing terrain hierarchy, we start with the empty language and sigma star. So here is the uh, inclusion relation of both hierarchy. So we see at the bottom the subinterian hierarchy and at the top the top step hierarchy. So each level is included in the next half level. So L0 is included in L1 half, which is included in L1. And each level of the subinterian hierarchy is included in the same level of the top depth hierarchy. And each level of the top depth hierarchy is included in the level plus one of the subinterian hierarchy. Here will be some example of language contained in the first level of both hierarchy, starting with Tobin-Tarian. So the base uh, class contain only the empty 
language and sigma star. Then language in one half has the following shape. It's union of language where we have like a sigma star A1, sigma star A2, etc., AK sigma star. So sequence of letter and in between the sigma star. The first level is the Boolean closure of uh, the level one half. And which is interesting here is that we can use the complement operation. And the, the, um, the level one half correspond to, the level one correspond to piecewise testable language. And for the level three half, we have a similar characterization of the level half. But instead of having sigma star in between letters, we can uh, have subset of sigma. And this level is also characterized by uh, partially order NFA. So language in three half are language accepted by partially order NFA. The partially order NFA is an NFA in which there is a linear order of the states such that the transition function go from one state to a state which is bigger in this ordering. For the dot hierarchy, we start with finite and cofinite language. The level uh, half is similar to the level half of some interior, but instead of having letters and in between sigma star, we have word and in between sigma star. Then the level one is the Boolean closure of the half level. So in this work, we are interested in this intersection of this problem for language belonging to some specific level in each hierarchy. Uh, checking if the automata given as input is belong to the right level is not part of the problem. The reason is we show that checking that an NFA belong to some level or sub interior or dot hierarchy is at least P space hard. Now let's have an overview of our results. So from the generic case, we have membership in P space for all level of both hierarchy. Then we show P space hardness starting from the level one of the dot hierarchy and the level two of the strobing interior hierarchy. For NP, in the case of NFA, we have membership for P0. And for hardness, we show that starting from P0 and L1, the problem is NP hard. The picture looks a bit different in the case of DFAs and P1 FAs, for which we have membership in NP for B1 half, L1, and L3 half. For the case of L1 half, we have membership in NL and NFA hardness for NFA and for DFA. We have a membership in L and L harness. For the lowest level of the stop interior hierarchy, the problem is in AC0. Now I will hand over to Petra for the rest of the presentation. We now go through the results in detail, starting from the lowest complexity to the highest one. So for the first level of the Straubing Terrier hierarchy, L0, the intersectional emptiness problem is solvable in AC0, both for DFAs and NFAs accepting languages from this class. And remember that here the uh, lowest level consists of either uh, the empty language or a sigma star and we are using a promise that we have either of these cases so we are using the promise that a language accepted by an automaton uh, in, in the input is either the empty set or a sigma star and with this promise that means that uh, in order to distinguish these two cases we only need to check whether the automaton accepts something at all for instance the empty word and since we are not using epsilon transitions, this means that the empty word is accepted by the automaton if and only if the initial state is a final state, which we can simply check by directly looking uh, at the input, meaning that AC0 is enough to check this property. Then moving on to the next level, which is the one half level of the Straubing Terrier hierarchy. Here, the picture depends on whether we have a DFA or we have NFAs in the input. For DFAs, the problem is log space complete. For NFAs, it's non-deterministic log space complete. And the proof here goes as follows. First, remember that languages in this class are finite unions of languages of these forms, where we have uh, sequence of letters and in between each letter we have sigma star and most important also in the beginning and in the end uh, we have a sigma star 
That means that if we are having a word uh, in the language, regardless of what we append at the beginning or at the end, the resulting word is still in the language. And this is the fact that we will use in order to solve the problem easily. Because, um, so, and this is the case for all non-empty languages. So either I have a completely empty language, then I have nothing in the intersection at all, or I have a non-empty language and then I can uh, append stuff to my words in the language from the beginning and the end. And since I can append this, I don't need to find a word that brings all automaton in parallel to a finite state, but I can do that in a sequential way, meaning that I focus on one automaton, I bring it to the final state, then I know that I am in a final state regardless of what I continue to read, I will stay in the final state and I can now focus on the next automaton. And therefore the problem basically reduces to checking non-emptiness. Because the only thing I need to know is that for each input automaton, I don't have the empty language and then I can find a word in the intersection in a sequential way. And basically I can also uh, construct uh, this word in the intersection. Namely, I know that um, my languages are of this form. I have these uh, letters bringing me from basically one partition of the language to the next one. And if I list the alphabet then and read each, read each symbol in the alphabet, I know that I make at least some progress and hence it's sufficient to uh, read a listing of the alphabet as many times as I have states in the biggest, uh, in the automaton when I'm focusing on one automaton. And this means that in the deterministic case, I can do this with just having a pointer, which uh, while reading the word uh, in the automaton and in the non-deterministic case, I'm guessing the way through the automaton for this word. And for the hardness, the, the hardness is obtained by the graph accessibility problem without degree two for NFAs and out degree one for DFAs. And this gives us then the uh, completeness results for the respective automaton model. Now we continue to the next case, namely the uh, NP case. While previously we had uh, completeness for uh, both cases of DFAs and of NFAs, uh, when we are considering the NP case, the picture changed because here we only have completeness for DFAs, but not for NFAs, but we come to that later. Let's first uh, focus on the case that all input automata are DFAs. Then we have that for DFAs and as well for partially ordered uh, non-deterministic finite automata. Remember P or NFA means that we have that all transitions follow a state ordering, meaning that I uh, once I left a state I cannot uh, return to it. And um, for these two classes DFAs and P or NFAs we have that for the lowest level in the dot type hierarchy, namely level 0 and 1 half, as well for the levels one and three half of the strobing terminal hierarchy, which contain these two classes, the problem is NP complete. And here for the hardness, we use the fact that for, uh, even for finite languages, the intersection on emptiness problem, uh, when the languages are given by some automaton is NP hard. Uh, the proof uh, is similar to the um, Prove that short synchronizing words, uh, the problem of short synchronizing words is NP complete by a reduction by Epstein. Uh, briefly, the reduction goes from the satisfiability problem and what we do here in the intersection on emptiness setting, we are creating an automaton for each clause and this automaton then accepts all variable assignments which satisfy this clause. And then we have that in the intersection, we only have those words which satisfy each clause. And since the uh, lowest level of the dot depth hierarchy, namely level zero, already contains all finite languages, 
the hardness is then obtained by class um, member uh, by uh, class containment. For the membership, uh, it's sufficient to consider the biggest class in the listing here, namely the Straubing Torreon 3 half level. And remember that uh, languages of this class can be accepted by partially ordered NFAs, where the transition follow a state ordering. And we can show that if we are having an, as input a DFA, then an equivalent minimal PO NFA is bounded in size by the size of the input DFA. And we can further obtain a length bound of the word in the intersection in the size of the respective PONFAs, uh, which are equivalent to the DFAs. So um, assume that we are having as input a set of PONFAs. We know by the um, class that we have equivalent, that there exist equivalent PONFAs. Then we can use a PEPL argument to get the length bound on the word in the intersection because um, we know that each transition, for all transitions follow a state ordering and that by reading a word in the intersection, we should make progress in at least one automaton in the intersection and therefore we can track the active states and we know we never go back. So uh, eventually, after a polynomial number of steps in the size of the combined automaton, we will reach final states in each automata. And therefore, we have a polynomial bound on the length of a word in the intersection. And we can, in the size of the input, DFAs or PONFAs, and therefore we can simply guess the word in the intersection. But therefore, we have completeness for in the case of DFAs. But if we have uh, general NFAs in, as the input, then the picture changes. The NP hardness is, of course, um, the, the NP hardness of course remains. But for the membership, we can only prove membership in NP for the uh, case of uh, level zero in the dot depth hierarchy, but no longer in these other classes here. And for uh, B0, the proof goes as follows. Remember, B0 consists of all finite or cofinite co languages. If we have the case that all automata accept cofinite languages, then we know that uh, finally we will find a word which is long enough such that it's, it is accepted by all of the automata because they can only reject a finite number of words, meaning that if all NFAs accept cofinite languages, we can simply output yes. And if this is not the case, meaning that some automata accept only finite languages, then we can guess a word in the intersection of these finite languages. And we know that since the languages are finite, the length of the longest word accepted by the automata is uh, bounded in size by the size of the NFA. And therefore, we can uh, guess the word in uh, polynomial time. <clears throat> For the other uh, classes, as already stated, we only have NP hardness, but we don't have membership. And we can also not use the ideas we had for DFAs because we showed that for a given NFA, the um, size of the equivalent PO NFA can be exponentially larger. So meaning that even if we're using the promise of the language, that we know there exists an equivalent PO NFA for a given NFA, the NFA can still be exponentially smaller than the equivalent PO NFA. And therefore, the length bound in the size of the PO NFA does not help us if our input is exponentially smaller. Then finally, we come to the last case of uh, p-space uh, completeness. Remember, all of the for, for every class, the problem is contained in p-space and starting from the level one of the dot depth hierarchy and the level two of the Straub interior hierarchy, we have that the intersectional emptiness problem is p-space hard. 
and this is the case even for binary input alphabet and the proof goes by uh, having a for the general uh, size alphabet having a closer look at the reduction uh, performed by Cosen which showed the uh, p-space hardness in general and then one can observe that we are the languages created in this reduction are actually uh, contained in these classes here and for the binary alphabet case what remains to do is to encode the languages in binary using a block encoding. So and this concludes the results we had and we, are, uh, we also have some open problems for you to solve. So the most interesting open problem is of course the complexity gap for NFAs for the level one half of the Dopdep hierarchy and the level one and three half of the Strasbourg interior hierarchy because there we only have p-space membership and np-hardness and the question is whether uh, these problems can also be solved in np or if we see some other complexity here. Then, of course, when one could also do a systematic study of related problems, such as the non-universality problem for NFA or the union non-universality problem for DFAs. Here, there is kind of an implicit complement uh, involved, so we think, so probably the picture will shift a bit. And as already indicated above here, so far we only observed like classical complexities like NP, P space or uh, log space, deterministic and non-deterministic, but we have not seen any other um, complexity, especially for instance from the polynomial hierarchy. And in the beginning we suggested that one might see also the polynomial hierarchy uh, reflected in these hierarchies, but this is apparently not the case for the full hierarchy because we already have p-space hardness in the level uh, one of dotdef and two of strong terrain but maybe for the remaining classes here or if you consider a more fine-grained uh, hierarchy one might still observe the levels of the polynomial hierarchy in the complexity and we also have some uh, further results on the problem namely uh, for instance, how many automaton of each level do we need to obtain the next hardness or how do the picture change if we have a, a, the additional restriction that the languages should be com commutative. And if you want to know more about this, we would be very happy if you take a look into our paper on the complexity of intersection on emptiness for star-free language classes. And with that, I thank you very much for listening and see you in the Q&A session.